Hey everyone, Mike here with Mike W Consulting, and I've been getting a lot of emails and questions lately from people asking exactly what is a virtual machine. Well, in this video, I'm going to go over with you what a virtual machine is. We're going to go over the difference between physical and virtual machines. We're going to go over the benefits of virtual machines. We're going to go over the types of hypervisors, which is the software that basically runs virtual machines. And we're going to go over the different companies that can provide you paid or free hypervisors. Now, a physical server is something that you can touch. It's what you're actually putting in the rack, kind of like these. A virtual machine you can't touch, but it lives on the same physical hardware that a physical machine basically is. Now, physical machines are expensive. You guys all probably know this, is you're easily going to drop a few grand on a physical machine to run an application. They're more expensive, they're underutilized, so if you basically take any one of your physical machines and if it's not running multiple applications or if it's not downloading and installing Microsoft patches and you watch Task Manager for about 10 minutes, I'm willing to bet that your server probably is never getting over 10% utilized on the CPU. Physical servers are just, they're always underutilized because most of the time they're spec'd way better than what is actually needed or they're spec'd for the worst case scenario. The other thing is physical machines should only have a single role. You do not want to have, say, your email server and a web server on the same physical machine under the same operating system. This is a bad idea. And the reason is because if you need to take your say email server down to upgrade to the newest email application you're also gonna have to take your web server offline and that's not something you want to do at the same time if your web server gets hacked the hacker now has access to your email server as well and that's again something that you really do not want to have happen virtual machines are less expensive they utilize the same physical hardware so that you can get multiple virtual machines utilizing a piece of hardware that you would have bought for a physical machine anyway. And then each one is considered its own server. So we don't have that issue of our physical machine being compromised and you have access to everything. If we have a physical piece of hardware running a web server and an email server, if the web server is compromised, the hackers are not going to be able to get access to the email server at least not easily anyway. So now let's take a quick look. So we have some, we have a business. We have a business set up here and we wanna add an exchange server. So we're gonna add an exchange server here. This is a physical server. Well now the business says we need to add a SQL server. We need to, some database stuff. So we buy another piece of hardware and we install SQL. Okay, that's all well and good. Well now we wanna, you know, host our own website. So we need to purchase a web server. So we purchase another piece of physical hardware for our, our web server. And now we need to purchase a file store because we have more employees now that our business is growing. And we need a place for our employees to store their files. So we create a file server. We have to purchase a new piece of hardware for a file server. Well, you can quickly see how this is going to get very unruly very quick with all these servers just kind of popping up and each one being, you know, five grand just to buy the hardware. Well, with virtualization, we can do something similar, but it's much more scalable. So with some of that same piece of physical hardware that we bought, say, for our email server, we can actually host in their own virtual machines an email server, a SQL server, a web server, and our file store. And this is going to save us a significant amount of money and it's also, it's just better utilized. You're going to see that your physical server will be better utilized than it was if you had a physical server for each one of these roles. Now, there are two types of hypervisors. There's type 1 and there's type 2. Type 1 hypervisors are what are also called as native or bare metal hypervisors. And those are the ones that have direct access to the hardware. They don't necessarily require an underlining operating system to work properly. They just work. Um, and they typically perform much better than a type 2 hypervisor. Now, a type 2 hypervisor is what's called a software-based hypervisor. 
and these hypervisors require an underlying operating system to work. So an example would be KVM. KVM actually requires you to have a Linux installation first before you really install the hypervisor on top of it. Now, an example of a type 1 type hypervisor would be VMware or Hyper-V. Now, I know a lot of people are going to tell me and have said in the past that Hyper-V is a type 2 hypervisor. That is not the case. Hyper-V is a type 1 hypervisor, but it appears to be a type 2 based on the way that you install it. But trust me, Hyper-V is a type 1 hypervisor. Now, there's a few different companies that actually offer type 1 and type 2 hypervisors. The, the big ones are Hyper-V from Microsoft and VMware. And both of these can actually be purchased from Microsoft or VMware. And you can also get a free version of each one from their website. And I'll put links to both of those down below in the description. The other one, which is my favorite Type 2 hypervisor, is VirtualBox. Now, you've probably seen other videos I've created about VirtualBox, but VirtualBox is a great, you know, Type 2 hypervisor. It can actually take use of hardware virtualization that, you know, comes pretty standard on almost any PC or server you buy these days. But it's best suited for downloading and installing on your desktop computer or your laptop so that you can do a virtual lab, which is what I typically do with it. And I'll have a link down below on my video on how to create a virtual lab utilizing VirtualBox. Well, that's going to conclude this video. I hope you found it informative. And if you like these types of videos, please leave me a like. Just so I know to keep creating them, if there's something else you'd like to see, please leave me a message down in the comments. And feel free to subscribe so you make sure you get updates to all my new videos going out.